We uh, move our attention now to Dr. Billy Goldberg. He's been an emergency medicine physician for more than 30 years, an associate professor of emergency medicine at the Grossman School of Medicine and practices clinically in the emergency room at Bellevue Hospital Center in New York. He's performed research and published on topics including trauma, cervical spine injury, pulmonary embolism, and resident education. He can be heard on Sirius XM's Channel 110, hosting his own weekly radio show on the Doctor Radio Channel. He's also an author. Two of his books have made the New York Times bestseller list. Dr. Goldberg, good morning. Thank you so much for being with us. You're on with Rob and Bill and John. Great to have you. There you go. I just had I'm to hit the right button. I'm also very old. You're also very old. Is that what you said? <laughs> you said when you said three decades, I'm like, oh, man, I'm getting old. I promise you, everybody in this room is older than you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're in good company. Excellent. Yeah, let's call it a lot of experience. How's that sound? There you go. You always got to look, look at the positive side. And this interview is provided by Curad, uh, by the way. You're discussing the at-home use of natural remedies and how companies like Curad are infusing them into their products and the very important issue of knowing when it's time to see a doctor. I've seen a lot of those in the last month or so, it seems. Uh, so let's talk about natural remedies. I think most of us are probably very aware of aloe vera, for instance, uh, when you get sunburn, everyone always gives you aloe vera. Is that an example of a uh, natural remedy? Yeah, there's a lot of them, but aloe vera is one of them. I mean, people who have you know, gotten a bad sunburn, you either you know, have a thing of aloe vera at home, or even better, you have the plant, and you break the plant to get the gel out. And that gel has been studied for years, and it has some antibacterial properties and some healing properties. Really, though, the most important thing is when you, you have a wound is to keep it clean. So simple stuff, you wash it out really well, and then you can put something on it to create a barrier for infection, to prevent infection from getting in. Doctor, we were talking about early before we came on air, poison ivy. Is there a natural treatment for poison ivy? Yes, don't go near it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, see, that's, again, perfect example is prevention is always the best thing. Um, and then you want to make sure you're not making it worse. So, I mean, poison ivy, ivy is caused by the oil that's on that, that plant. So you got to clean yourself really well, clean the clothing really well, and you really want to try not to scratch it. So, again, keeping it covered can really help. Um, for poison ivy, there's specific medications that we use, kind of anti-inflammatory medications to kind of decrease that itch while it heals itself. But usually with time, these things go away as long as they don't, get worse. Now, I've heard of using honey as a way of treating allergies, buying local honey and consuming that. However, there is another study that shows it can be used as a wound dressing. Explain that one. Yeah, so honey has been, in ancient times, you can go back to the Egyptians and, and the Greeks, they have looked at honey and used honey, and it's been studied. Um, honey, I mean, bees are pretty amazing, but honey has antibacterial properties, and in some places around the world, they've used honey. There's a study that I saw once from India where they used honey and potato skins as burn dressings. You know, in some places, you got to, you know, if you don't have the fancy stuff, you got to use what you have around. Uh, so th that's another one of those natural products that people have used over, over the years. So what are some of the... the wives' tales, for lack of a better term, that people should avoid. Oh, this is John, by the way. Good morning. Uh, for example, when I grew up, burns always were treated with butter, which I I think is a really bad idea now, right? <laughs> that was You don't put butter on burns. Unless you're eating somebody's burns. Right, then, exactly, that's exactly. Not a good idea. We're so, going down a path. Yeah. <laughs> now I'm getting hungry. Yeah. No, the problem with a burn is when you're burning yourself, it's a thermal injury, so heat injury, um, and you really want to cool it off. So if somebody is, is burning themselves right away and then slapping butter or even any ointment on it, that seals in the heat and can make the injury worse. So you want to basically cool it off, so you run it under cold water. Um, ice usually is a little too cold, so you really just want you know cool running water. You let, give it some time to cool off, and then you want some barrier to put over it. We in the hospital, we use an antibiotic ointment, um, but the truth is those antibiotic ointments really aren't fighting the infection. They're just a barrier cream. So things like aloe vera would work just as well. You know, a cure bandage that is used with baking soda would work just as well. Um, and then it's about making sure it's not getting infected. And if it's getting worse, 
you come to us in the ER. What about the wide use of antibacterial cream? That you get you get a cut. Um, I forget the little yellow tube. Neosporin. Neosporin. Um, I was surprised that I got some stitches, and the doctor was very specific about don't use that on on this cut. But I routinely, if I get a cut at home, I put that stuff on it and put a band aid. And so, when is that a good idea and a bad idea? So, you know, it's it's kind of a a, people make a mistake about that. They think because it's a triple antibiotic cream, or they hear the word antibiotic, that it's actually, you know, killing the bacteria. We use it as a protective cream. There's one specific cream that's a prescription cream that we'll occasionally use for skin infections, but that's not the one you can just buy in the store. So really, it's just a barrier cream for us. And you want to keep a wound moist so that it doesn't scar as much. There's kind of a a fine line between too wet versus dry. But really, the, the simplest thing to do is when you have a cut or a scratch is wash it out with a lot of water, soapy water. We have this saying in the hospital that the Solution to pollution is dilution. So the more you pour in it, and, and we'll basically take patients and, and bring them over to the sink and just kind of scrub their wound out. And then you want to keep it clean and covered. Your skin is a barrier to infection. And once you break that barrier, infection can get in. What That's about- where you can go and throw a bandage on it. You know, go, you know, Curad has been making adhesive bandages since 1951. They now have this new line called Curad Naturals. Some of them have Arm & Hammer baking soda in them. Some of them have aloe vera with vitamin E in it. And it's really just keeping a bandage over it so it doesn't get dirtier. And, uh, doctor, before you go, uh, these are home remedies. How do you know when the home remedy is not enough and you need to actually go see a doctor or go to the ER? Yeah, I mean, if, you're, if your wound is getting red or you have a fever or there's pus coming out of it, then you need to see somebody. Uh, I don't, you know, don't believe these dramatic claims that people make. It's, you know... This is simple stuff, and in most cases, less is more. So um, if you have any doubt, that's why ERs are open 24-7. That's what's kept me in business for 30 years, and that's what has me here today. And uh, final minute goes to you. How can we learn more about the books you've written as well? Well, you can check me out on AskDrBilly.com, but to check out more about the Curad Naturals, uh, you can go to Curad.com slash first aid slash natural. Or just go to Amazon.com, Walmart.com, and you can buy some of these products. Dr. Billy Goldberg, thank you very much for your time this morning. We greatly appreciate it. Thanks for having me.